When you lose an Undertale Yellow and see the game over screen, a song starts to play called Justice. It is a melody so good, so inducing, that you could find yourself lingering on that screen for far longer than you should. It simultaneously sounds melancholic, sand-swept, and even childlike, a perfect audio encapsulation of the tone Undertale Yellow is going for. The world is undeniably cartoonish and carefree, but at the same time you can't help but feel there's a somber undertone baked into the story that, regardless of the great memories you'll make with this cast of characters, the way all of this Ends will be something very bittersweet. There has been nothing like Undertale since its 2015 release. There is an X factor to its NPCs and setting that no one has quite been able to replicate. On a literal and story level, the surface is a simple place, but diving deeper reveals mysteries and implications so tragic and so gut-wrenching that it's impossible to view this world the same way ever again after taking the plunge. But should you take the plunge on Undertale Yellow, a fan game that has been in development for almost a decade at this point, to say that Yellow had a tough act to follow would be underselling it massively. Ignoring the entertaining battle system, unique setting, and terrific characters, Undertale's sheer size in terms of fanbase eclipses any RPG Maker game, with some YouTube videos regarding it exceeding hundreds of millions of views. Damn, I chose the wrong game to make content for, I guess. Expectations were high, and the pressure that was on the fan developers to satisfy players was almost surely at the forefront of their minds. The question is, are those expectations met? Does Undertale Yellow have the chops to compete with the raw quality on display in base Undertale regarding the writing and music? Well, that question might be redundant regarding the latter since some of Yellow's soundtrack has been floating around for years now, but in case the Game Over theme wasn't enough of a reminder... Undertale Yellow begins like most tales in this universe do, entering a hole irresponsibly. Our protagonist this time isn't Frisk, but rather a boy named Clover, who looks similar but with an added dose of yeehaw. Some familiar faces return like Toriel and Flowey, but for the most part, this cast is entirely newcomers that earn their keep and quickly worm their way into your heart. Which is good, because it is an unfortunate truth that turn-based RPGs are more prone to becoming repetitive quickly, and it's a blemish that shows up in some of my favorite games, but Undertale Yellow sidesteps this using good pacing and minigames, but primarily through the return of the action-based evasion mechanic of base Undertale. With quality that arguably exceeds Toby's original work, monsters shoot projectiles that are perfectly suited to their personalities and quirks, but the real star of the show is the boss battles. With Crazy twists that range from being tied to the center of your dodge box, and even one that transforms things into a rhythm game. Each of these battles is punctuated with writing so authentic to Toby Fox's original style that it could easily be mistaken for cut content. NPCs have all the dorky charm and wit that you'd want from the Undertale universe. Any doubts I had about this team not hitting the mark died in the battle with Martlet, a bird-like creature that is constantly trying to set aside her people-pleasing demeanor to be a better member of the Royal Guard. There's even even lots of prompted dialogue when interacting with NPCs multiple times, like when talking to Flowey at a save point after a boss defeated you. With all of this praise I've already levied, you'd probably not be surprised if I told you that Yellow is also a masterclass in character introduction. That is, the process of presenting a character for the first time and then pacing them in such a way that the player grows to care for them. Or at least, that's what I would say, excluding one glaring exception. We'll get back to that. There is no amount of good writing that can make up for just spending time with a character and the writers here understood that well. At one point, you'll happen across a desert town and become acquainted with a team of five sheriffs, all entertaining in their own right. Each gets their own dialogue, screen time, and character moments before a culmination at the end where you're fighting each of them as they swap out for one another and occasionally even attack you at the same time. With the cutscene topping this all off, melting away the leader's cool exterior to show a more vulnerable, childlike insecurity to him. It's all great stuff. In a span of less than an hour and a half, I had become acquainted with a whole cast of characters that I grew to like and care about. At no point did I feel like my time was being wasted talking to any of these NPCs. I was always advancing either the story or individual subplots related to each character. Unfortunately, for as remarkable as Undertale Yellow's writing is, I think that there is a big misstep that they took in that department that I can summarize in one word, Soroba. For those who don't know, Soroba is an NPC you meet around the midpoint of the game in the pacifist route. And don't get me wrong here, she's competently written 
written and even has interesting motivations for doing what she does. But man, do you spend a lot of time with her in the last third of the game. While I enjoyed some of her screen time, she never got under my skin the same way Martlet or Dalv did, which is obviously going to be a big downside when she becomes so important to the story. They did a great job of giving her this quiet, reassuring attitude that the player surely craves when they arrive in Wild East for the first time, what with all the sheriffs breathing down Clover's neck and all. But I was never so stricken with her that I felt it was worth making her such a major player in the story. I can't quite articulate the exact reason I didn't jive with her the way I did with other characters. Perhaps it's because she's a tad stoic throughout a lot of your time in the factory. I'd be lying if I said some of her flashbacks didn't tug at my heartstrings, though. I was impressed at the amount of depth they were able to cram into an RPG that doesn't even clock in at 10 hours. I think most players will enjoy her company, but I guess there was just something missing for me in the end. Undertale Yellow is something that simply must be experienced. Its universe is unnaturally easy to get attached to, and without spoiling anything, the ending to the pacifist route, while not making me cry, did tug at my tear ducts and etch itself into my brain for the foreseeable future. Even if you're familiar with Undertale's lore and know roughly how this tale will play out, it is worth seeing the texture of this adventure. If, like me, you enjoy having your heart torn in half by weird-looking, top-down RPG maker-like games, Undertale Yellow will almost certainly do that for you, and better than most others at that. Mm -hmm.